project that I gave you because apparently um, I've been an absolute space cadet and haven't really talked about it in class. Um, hardly at all. Uh, so what I'm going to do for uh, your project one, well, your, your total uh, cumulative project, is we're actually going to work on that as a design problem this week. So everything that's due tonight, that I had due tonight, will be due this Friday instead. A little bit more time to work on it. Um, on Wednesday, uh, if you <laughs> don't have a partner, because apparently we got this far without me making sure everybody has a partner. Uh, if you do not have a partner on Wednesday, um, we can fix that. So don't worry about the stuff that's due tonight. We'll work on it in class this week. If you have done it already, great. Uh, I have more stuff for you to do this week. But um, yeah, so any questions on that, on what we're doing? Yeah. Do we need our pies this week? Uh, no, you shouldn't need your pies this week. OK. Um, Look at playing tetherball. So we're continuing our discussion in chapter three. Uh, last week, does anybody remember what we talked about? We talked about buses. We, talk about we also talked about registers. It was the physical hardware associated with connecting. Uh, microprocessors into a circuit. Microprocessors themselves are a chip, but then there's a lot of things that are connected to microprocessors to really make them function. Um, this week, what we're talking about is how to take a microprocessor and turn it into a microcomputer. No, sorry, microcontroller. Microcomputer is a little different. Okay. So the microprocessors, um, I mean, the microprocessors really would make up everything. There are microprocessors are on the Pi. That's, that's actually what you're programming when you're putting it in, is you're putting in information that goes into the processor on the Raspberry Pi when you program it. Um, when it comes to the microcontroller though, microcontrollers are microprocessors uh, that have very specific functions. Okay, the function of a microcontroller is as the name implies to control. Okay, well, what does it control? What does a microcontroller control? Um, some of the examples that were given in your textbook were uh, you have controlling things like uh, automotive fuel. flow. Okay, those systems are no longer, um, I mean, the, it used to be that it was directly linked to the air influx to, of the, uh, uh, the gas pedal connected to, uh, manually connected to how much air goes into the intake of your engine, which then dictates how much fuel it gets consumed. That used to be how it was. Uh, in today's world, the foot pedal is now a digital uh, circuit, really, that uh, yeah, it has mechanical resistance to it, but applying digital, uh, applying a force to it produces a digital signal uh, that lets the motor know how much, how deep, how hard, how whatever uh, your gas pedal is being pushed. 
Now, most brake systems are still very mechanical. Um, so, because at this point, everybody trusts a lot more mechanical systems than electrical systems for 100% accuracy, which is ironic, but it's whatever. Um, other things, you have HVAC control systems. Um, okay, anytime you, anytime you increase the thermostat in your house or in this room, it's usually a digital system, and it involves a microcontroller whose job is to control heat level, or to control power consumption by the HVAC unit. Uh, smart lighting systems are usually controlled by um, I should say smart lighting systems. Are usually controlled by some kind of a digital circuit, uh, some kind of microcontroller. Uh, if, I mean, if you just look at this, it's, it's things that have some element of control systems. So for those of you who have taken 350 already, um, anything that, that has a digital control system in it requires a microcontroller. Okay, um, and I could just keep th naming things all day. Uh, but uh, the when this textbook came out, uh, the textbook, when did the textbook come out? Anybody know when the textbook came out? I know it's a weird question, but you should all know it. Hey, Kenny. Ah, oh, so now you let me open a PDF on my computer. Nice. Um, but when the textbook came out, the Raspberry Pis were not really a big thing, which is why when the textbook said all microcontrollers are uh, application-specific processors, uh, at the time they were. Ten years ago, microcontrollers were considered to be application-specific. You had to program it specifically to do something because uh, microcontrollers themselves were not general. They, you had to hook up certain connections. Uh, what the Raspberry Pi did, and what made the Raspberry Pi so innovative, was that they just said, hey, we can take a microcontroller, we can take a computer, and we can just mash them together. Um, and that was, that was really revolutionary, uh, believe it or not. And it opened up a lot of applications by which now people who do not understand how to build their own microcontroller systems, people who are not electrical engineers, uh, can, can turn around and design really fantastic things. It's all the hobbyists on YouTube. Um, they don't need a degree in electrical engineering to, to build a smart barista. Uh, all they need is just a little bit of creativity and a whole lot of work ethic. So. Uh, the microcontroller itself has evolved dramatically in recent years to the point where now we see it differently than we did uh, when this textbook was written. Uh, now, there's still a lot of important information in the textbook. Uh, certainly, if you were ever to take the FE in electrical engineering, uh, it's, it's all information that is still relevant today. Uh, it's just that the state of knowledge of today is, is far greater uh, in microcontrollers just because we've been able to do more uh, with them. So most microcontrollers are application-specific systems um, because, I mean, you have hardwired connections that you don't really want to jump in and mess around with. Uh, but the Raspberry Pi, Arduinos, and a whole host of other uh, different Linux-based and, and uh, other types of, of uh, processors that have been developed, uh, those are general purpose. And the number of them keep increasing. There are, there are a crazy number. There are more than I can, can even remember at this point in my mind. Uh, but there's just a ton of things that, that do what a Raspberry Pi do now. Because once Raspberry Pi said, hey, this can be done, a bunch of people said, hey, <laughs> I bet I could do it too. Um, you could build your own if you really wanted to. Um, you probably don't have the ability to uh, create the tiny resistors on circuit boards and make it nearly as optimized as the Raspberry Pi is, but uh, maybe with enough time you could.
and promise you the first Raspberry Pi was not a perfect entity of pure diabolical engineering. Uh, it took time to develop it to that. So when it comes to microcontrollers, uh, the, the most important aspect of a microcontroller uh, comes out as the input-output ports. Okay. Um, and yes, uh, microprocessors and microcomputers do have I.O. ports. That's a uh, common misnomer is that I.O. ports are not present on microcomputers, uh, but they really are. Is if you think about it, a microcomputer or a microprocessor has to do something. Um, and if it doesn't, I mean, if, if you just put all the information in and nothing comes out, uh, what's the use? It's like, oh, nope, I'm going to use that example on YouTube. Um, that would have been highly inappropriate. I'm not going to, yeah. Oops. I forgot I got to censor myself because I'm posting this on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, you don't want to just dump stuff into something and not get something back out of it in return, okay? You want it to do something with the information it gets. Um, so, you know what, I'm going to use the example anyways. It's like feeding a child. Uh, you just give it to stuff and they just, they just grow and then they don't do anything with it. Like, what are you even doing with your life? It's just poop. Um, I'm kidding. It's a joke. All of us were kids at some point. Um... I apologize, YouTube. Uh, but anyways, uh, you have to have some kind of an output. But the microcontroller outputs are a lot different uh, than the microcomputer and microprocessor uh, outputs. Microcomputer and microprocessor out input outputs. <sighs> we'll have uh, maybe a screen that it's connected to, maybe a tiny screen, it may be driving just uh, a display output, uh, it may uh, be dictating, um, you know, it may have inputs of, of button presses, uh, it may have inputs of sensors, uh, although that, that's much more rare. Um, it's, it's just, a, you know, if you imagine a, the inputs and outputs of a computer, it's what are all the things you hook up to, like printers and, and things. That's, that's very much the case for microcomputers. Um, it's a simple set of, of connections. Now, microcontrollers can connect to all of those things as well. Because a microcontroller is, in effect, a microcomputer. So it can have the screen, the button, a printer, something. It can have those types of applications as well. It can be, uh, you know, the the button screen on your on your center console of your uh, car. It can be something like that. Uh, but microcontrollers also usually have much uh, a much broader range of inputs and outputs. In fact, they uh, the purpose of a microcomputer is to process information, capture information, collect information, store information, okay? Um, so one of the input outputs is, is to memory. Uh, purpose of a microcontroller though, is the purpose is to do all of those things, but then use that as a way to control something. Okay, so it's input output ports. Uh, can be, I mean, they have ADC chips, uh, DAC chips, that's analog to digital, um, and then digital to analog, because uh, the analog to digital is, is how information is brought in, that's the input. Digital to analog, that's how information is brought out. You, all of you, uh, used one of these as an output device. Um, I wanted to use this as an input device, but I found out that we only have like eight of them, which sucks. Um, however, if you had 350 with me last semester, uh, we did use those. So you have had experience using an ADC if you took 350 with me last semester. Um, and if you take 350 with me next semester, you probably will get that too, because I really love them. Um, 
But this also has a serial and parallel communication. Now what is serial and parallel communication? Well, uh, let's say here are the pins on my processor, okay? Every one of those pins is connected to something. In parallel communication, all of these pins work together to collect a quote unquote word, okay? So if this is off, on, 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 and I send that in all at the same time, the clock cycle hits inside the processor, which means it captures all this information. This then reads a word that is that. That's parallel communication, okay? You'll notice parallel communication, you, you, however many ports you have is your limit on how much, how long that word can be, okay? Uh, ribbon cables containing tons of different wires in them typically are, are doing parallel communication. Um, serial communication only requires one pin, and here it's a time dependency based on the words that's being set. So clock cycle one reads a zero. Okay, zero gets thrown on the end. It gets uh, put in the stack on the bottom. The next point is a one. The next point is a zero. Next point is a one, one, zero. So here's the stack at the bottom, stack at the top. Um, serial communication, it only requires one wire. It is substantially slower than parallel. Uh, as you'll notice here, the number of wires you have, uh, I mean, you can transmit a four letter word in one clock cycle, whereas it takes four clock cycles to do it here. Okay, if you combine both serial and parallel communication, yeah, you can increase your communication speed. Um, but typically, you'll either have one or the other. Um, so that is, that is the difference. Uh, when we're talking I2C, which is the interface that we use to connect your, your DAC device, um, I2C is a serial communication, okay? Uh, your SCL and SDA here uh, are actually, uh, those are your I2C ports. One of them is a clock. Uh, one of them is a serial input to your Pi, okay? Um, SDA, whoop, which I don't remember what SDA stands for right now. Uh, SDA is a parallel communication. You have one wire that carries one piece of information at a time. Um, there are four wires associated, associated with an SDA communication. So your Raspberry Pi does have both serial and parallel communication capabilities. Now that said, um, you would not notice a dramatic speed difference in using either of them. So uh, in this case, it doesn't help you, but with a lot of computers, you would notice a big difference between, you know, if you need to send a 12 bit word uh, constantly, it may be easier to do it with parallel communication rather than trying to code it serially, which takes 12 times as long, especially if you need something that gets transmitted very quickly, uh, such as between registers and the microprocessor itself. You wouldn't want that to be serial. So that slows your entire system down by a factor of 12. Uh, to if it has 64 bits, it can go all the way up to 64 times slower, um, which you don't need. So parallel communication has its place, but it does require a lot of wiring. Serial communication also has its place, um, but it is slower. So um, find a third one, and then, uh, and then we'll be in a happy place. Quantum computing is trying to find a way to speed this up uh, so that you can have a serial communication whereas, whereby multiple data points are transmitted simultaneously. Because that's, if you could do this and the first byte it reads isn't zero or one, it's 0 0.6, uh, 
um, that tells you a piece of information. Or if it's 0 0.64, uh, that's read in. Uh, now that, that's a piece of information, okay? Um, so that's, that is the beauty of right now what we're dealing with is in, in higher electronics, the direction that we want to go is, is we want to actually be able to send one word that has multiple letters in it through one wire. Because if you took this and then put it over four wires, uh, take quantum computing and put it over parallel communication, um, that's going to dramatically increase the speed uh, at which you're able to, to transmit knowledge. So, okay. Um, any questions over this material? As I said, microcontrollers are not, they're not terribly complex. Because all of you have, have had a substantial experience with Raspberry Pis at this point, you know what they're capable of doing. You have to program in how the processor connects to the adapt. Oh, I guess I should write this down. Um, even if the microcontroller is application specific, meaning it, it already has hardwired connections to certain things, you can't adjust which connections go where, um, there's still, you have to follow a step. Okay, so step one is you have to connect all of the, the input and inputs and outputs uh, to the appropriate components. Okay, whether that means you're taking a cable and connecting it into a screen or, or you're connecting to multiple buttons or you're actually reading a sensor input, uh, whatever it is, you have to connect those first. Once you have the connections, uh, what you do is you have to program microcontroller. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, you have to program your microcontroller to whatever operation you want it to do, okay? Um, now that, neither of those are small tasks, but once you've connected your I.O. ports, you program your microcontroller. Uh, the third step then, which is just programming your microprocessor, your third step is testing and verification. Okay, because your microcontroller has a certain specific output uh, as per the inputs that it receives, uh, usually, uh, if, if it's fully programmed, if it's not fully programmed, you put in some inputs and it just goes, what the heck? Uh, and it ignores them. Uh, but if you have fully programmed your microcontroller such that it does the operation, well, it should do the operation you want it to do, uh, testing and verification is a very important next step. Uh, oftentimes what a computer will do is it will have a very specific uh, testing machine where it will apply voltages and grounds at certain locations. Uh, it may send serial or parallel communication into the processor and then it will monitor what the output is coming out of it. Basically, it is a microcontroller that is used to determine whether or not a microcontroller is capable of doing what it, it's supposed to do. So that, that's robots building robots. Oh no. That's really what it is. It is. We've reached that point where robots now build robots. Um, that's a dark day. I need to stop teaching this class. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it requires it's it's an automated machine um, that checks to make sure uh, that the connections are valid. Uh, if you were building this yourself, um, <laughs> you're going to have to hook up a bunch of wires, and create a dummy system that will feed inputs to this, and check to see that the outputs are correct. You don't want to just take this and be like, "Yeah, I'm going to go plug it into the system." 
see if it runs <laughs> because you can destroy things that way. Um, if it Sometimes you, you hook up your wire so that you accidentally connect your outputs as inputs. And then what, what ends up happening there is, is you can get cycles where uh, it accidentally overloads itself or produces or sends too much power. It's just not a good idea to verify before installation. Um, but when you install, you have to do a final install uh, verification okay that's always a fourth step here is not only do you just electrically test how does the system behave when I apply inputs and outputs uh, but now you actually say okay it behaved the way that I I designed it to my next step is to actually put it inside of the system connect the physical connections to the components and, and make sure that everything is operating well so um, okay, any questions on this? All right, well, I'm gonna let out of class. Uh, on Wednesday, we're gonna be working on the project. On Friday, we're gonna be working on the project. And uh, yeah, so if you need to miss either of those days, let me know so I can, yeah. Okay. As long as you're on Wednesday, we should be good. Yeah. Well, as long as you're Wednesday, that's good. Thank you for letting me know right now. Okay, any other questions? When do you guys get out of football conditioning? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just got to live two more weeks. Is that when your spring game is?